go ahead and do a 10% bonus. You game. Okay. That's cocked. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. All right. So you guys all drift off to sleep and give me one second here. Uh, as you guys awaken in the morning, uh, you look around and you see that the drone is uh, sitting on the table kind of in the middle of some of the, the drinks and the leftover food. Um, and it seems to have, you know, a few little sparks coming out of the top and uh, one of the side panels, but they're very uh, small. It doesn't seem to be making any internal uh, noises other than just a little bit of arcing. And um, for the most part... Did I put part... a dwarf hair in this fucking thing and now it's <laughs> drunk from the... <laughs> for the most part, as you, as you uh, kind of all rouse yourselves from your slumber you look around and the room looks totally fine there doesn't look to have been any disturbances right away you guys notice that the door is still locked and the windows are still sealed and locked um and everything around seems... just sitting there not doing anything yeah everything seems completely in place and and totally fine but it... instead of the drone still being active i'm noticing that it just like gave up at some point in the night right exactly and you would guess okay. Okay. you would guess that whatever it is it's like this thing obviously needs some serious maintenance because it's just you sure. know. um okay so you guys get up and start collecting your gear um the next several moments pass by uh without incident as you guys um let's see seven o'clock you guys uh, I'll get up at about six. Um, it's already pretty considerably light outside. And um, you notice that the bar is now silent. The whole area is quiet. Um, other than what sounds to be a far away uh, commotion of um, uh, vendors and uh, mechanics and so forth starting to get their their uh, businesses opened up and, and their supplies running for the day. Um, I was going to say real quick um, to uh, uh, Ymir and Akama, um, since we've spent a bit of time together, but probably not inside such close quarters, um, they might have not during, like, if we're sleeping out in the, you know, in the wild, I probably wouldn't have gotten uh, more undressed like I was now. But they probably would have seen um now that I'm less, they would have seen that like my joints, like right above the knee is where my mechanical limbs start, and then right above the elbow. Or not I'm sorry, right right below the uh sh uh right at the shoulder right at the shoulder blade. Uh not, uh shoulder, yeah. At the shoulder blade. It's like that's where their arms are attached. So like full arm gone and then just from uh right above knee down are fake, and that's what they they would have never probably noticed that while I was regularly clothed. True. Very true. Um, do you want to give them just a, a quick description of like what those limbs look like? Um, because that would have so been yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, most times you've seen me, I've normally been either hooded or masked and hooded. Um, uh, maybe a few times I've had my mask and hood off, but I would normally have this uh, a high necked covering part of the face, not quite gambit style, but almost kind of. Um, mm. So like uh, covering, you know, my parts of my cheeks and up to my up to my chin, basically. Um, but removing all that, uh, you can see a, a pretty vertical laid scar across my uh, my left cheek. Um, it's uh, Ymir, I would guess, could probably tell what it's from, knowing his. Uh, uh, history and knowledge of metalworking and stuff like that. It's a it's a a, a burn from a heated blade. Um, All right. Uh, and then uh, my limbs are fairly agile looking. Um, they look to be fairly decent. Um, 
uh, prosthetics that have been altered slightly. Uh, I, uh, you might enjoy it, although you probably wouldn't like how many mechanical parts are in it and machine, like, you know, how much, you know, all that stuff is, but majority of, um, as much plastic and metal and stuff like that, that was in it. I've tried to remove as much as possible with more, uh, less synthetic and more organic type pieces. Um, me doing that to, for, to increase it's my, uh, casting and not be penalized so much and have such strain when I cast. But, um, I've, uh, taken and, uh, molded certain pieces of chitin where maybe metal or carbon was and put those in spots, which is why I was interested in the chitin from those particular, uh, shelled crab like monstrosities we had seen earlier and uh those crustaceans and then everything else is that it's everything's just like kind of coated stained or painted black uh just trying to be as uh inconspicuous possibly edgy as possible <laughs> uh and ymir you definitely recognize right away when you see the the construction um mm -hmm. of his uh limbs this is very different from any kind of prosthetics that you've ever seen. Um, you've seen some pretty advanced things uh, on the plains of Russia that the warlords love to demonstrate openly uh, to kind of bolster their own reputations um, and their own, uh, you know, the fear that others have of them and their organizations. Um, so they're pretty, pretty blatant about fielding, you know, 12 foot tall monstrosities of extremely high tech um but this is something elegant and there's something there's something inhuman about it but you can't quite put your finger on it yet okay um something definitely you file away in your mind though that it's uh you're you're intrigued um mm -hmm. because rather than something crude it's it, this took a, a magnificent intellect and uh, you want to know more. Um, exactly. A, a comma, as you see uh, his prosthetics, um, you definitely are very interested in a kind of almost, you know, maybe mystical cybernetics. You're not really sure um, that you've never encountered on any of your travels. This is definitely something very, very interesting. And knowing that your companion has working models. I mean, you've seen this person in combat getting, you know, roughed up and going through, you know, a full combat experience. Um, whatever these limbs are, they're, they're something very, very interesting. Um, and knowing that they're, they don't look like they're something biological, but they also don't look like they're made out of metal necessarily. They, there's, they're almost like a hybrid, um, and that magic is involved in that as well, instead of technology, is is very, very intriguing. Um, you know that several of the scientists that are within your family uh, uh, um, clan of Draconis, is it Draconis? Draco, clan Draco. Correct? Yeah. I can never remember Draconis or Draco, but anyway. Yeah, it's um, Draco. Okay. Draco Amicus. That's it. So within Draco Amicus, there's several scientists that would probably uh, be willing to owe you serious favors, serious favors in the future, were you to ever deliver a specimen like this for them to even just question briefly. Um, it would be that profound of a of a um, broadening of the Atlantean knowledge base that your, your positive, a quick peek, uh, would be worth quite a bit. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, oh, real quick. I wanted to say that, uh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, uh maybe another quick visual or way that you can interpret it is instead of being clunky, even though it's kind of well put together, like a ed 209 or even like something more like, raw like um mad max like it's very it, it's meant to be and try attempted to be very sleek and probably the original design was pretty sleek but then when the p parts are replaced instead of slapdash together 
uh, keeping that try to sleek thing. So kind of like a like a like a cricket's legs almost. Um, not necessarily as far as like the way they look, but as far as like the kind of the sleek and shininess and like kind of keeping that like organic looking feel. Uh, I'm not saying like I can rub my legs together and there's like spikes all over or anything like that and I make songs, but just kind of more that idea of uh, uh, overall shape and flow and design would be kind of, I guess, what his limbs look more like as opposed to, I don't know, like fucking that dude from Space Truckers with a robot penis. Like, I'm not trying to... <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen Space Truckers, but uh, you know, I think I have. I think I remember what you're talking about. <laughs> the scientist in it who got like shot, ripped apart by lasers, and he rebuilt his body, and it's like this clear plastic, <laughs> like, like junk, janky ass prosthetics. And, right. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, it, it's it, it it looks fairly well put together, obviously, but it's like it's it, you could tell it there was um some pride putting it together, um opposed to just it's there's there's a little artistry over just pure functionality excellent excellent uh okay as this all happens and you guys are all collecting your gear uh getting your armor on i assume everybody wants to get their armor on um and Indeed. getting everything prepared for uh some traveling um is there anything mm -hmm. anybody wants to talk about are you guys wanting to uh, comment on what you see as far as uh, Ren's prosthetics. Is there anything anybody wants to ask each other just real quickly before we head out? I want to ask you, GM, if I can reset my PPE. Absolutely. Everybody can reset PPE, MDC, uh, SDC, and ISP. Some of you only have MDC. Some of you have hit points in SDC. Well, we're getting a full, re full reset? Absolutely. Are we still close? That's because we're close enough to the ley line or the nexus, I guess. Uh, you guys just had enough time. You oh, plenty of time. Uh, a little uh, meditation how do I do that before again? sleep. Uh, you should be able. There should be a button. Is it under the profiles? Under... There's a button under magic. And there's a button on their psionics. Thank you. Yep. And then hit points. I don't know if... No one took actual hit points. We took, like, armor damage. Excellent. I know we did this before. We re Anyway, there's a way to do it, so... Uh... Even if I have to do it right on the token, but I don't think so. I, I'm just saying, I'm not sure if hit points in MDC was something that they make the GM do, but I kind of didn't think it was. So, um, All right, so everybody is geared up. You are ready to go on the way out. Um, some of the uh, local citizens that partied a little too hard are still uh, laying in heaps on their tables. Uh, obviously inebriated to the point of unconsciousness, um, but you do notice that the staff is kind enough not to just kick people out in the harsh weather, um, and it, this does feel like a place that they actually care about the citizens and that the individuals that make up the community are important, not just, um, you know, forced labor. That's something that you don't always see in communities on Rift's Earth. A lot of times there is a complete disregard for life and a complete lack of a sense of community. This is not one of those places. A small bastion of morality, perhaps limited morality, yes, but a jewel uh, in an otherwise desert landscape, to be sure. Um, it reminds you mere of his homeland and Jodenheimer because Jodenheimer has the same sort of feel. Excellent. A bastion in a wasteland. Excellent. All right, so as you guys uh, make your way out, um, Sissy is actually at the counter cleaning up from the night before. And as you guys are heading out, uh, she slides a small pack, um, nothing more really than a, a, a kind of cloth uh, sack with a small flap, uh, a, a large, uh, loose kind of purse. And uh, as she slides it across the bar uh, to you, Akama, as we'll say you're the first one walking out in, in the line, um, you reach out and as you pick up the strap, 
um, you notice that it has the heft of several pounds. And uh, right away you smell the incredible aroma of fresh baked bread, um, some mm. kind of some kind of jam, which is a rarity, and obviously some kind of really really spiced kind of meat. And the whole thing together just smells amazing. So um, she also uh, slides a small uh, walkie-talkie over to you. It's about the size of um, it's about the size of like a, a VHS cassette, only half as wide. Um, so it fits very, very neatly in your hand. It's it's relatively small. Um, and you'd say that it's only probably like, you know, seven inches tall. Um, it has just a square shape, uh, other than being elongated. And it has, uh, a full set of dials, buttons, uh, and even, uh, printed on a large, uh, manual in the form of a sticker along one side. So, uh, right away you realize that this is, you know, not necessarily a sophisticated piece of technology, but something that's definitely, you know, well-tested and probably well-manufactured. Um, she says to you, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is a way for you to contact us, uh, if you're within, uh, about a hundred miles. Um, she says beyond that, it, it probably won't get through to us. Um, she says, but if you need some assistance or, directions or information or whatever we can provide um she says uh you're all welcome to call and we'll do our best to help uh she says we consider you family and we truly appreciate what you've done for us and with this final gesture she just bows to all of you slightly and you can see that she's truly full of emotion you guys you guys have made a major impact on this place um Without any further comments, um, you guys slide out the front door, uh, relatively uneventful, uneventfully as you hit the sunlight, you guys all definitely feel the promise of a new day dawning upon you. Um, Wotech is quickly gathered up and to all of your amazement, um, he is now looking completely normal other than missing all of the fur on that side of his face, um, as well as about half an inch of skin uh, that was covering part of his lip. And so a, a large front canine tooth is hanging down like a tusk uh, because it's not really being covered well at all. Uh, other than those, that, that simple little bit, um, he actually looks like he's completely fine now. Um, his eyes look alert. Uh, it looks like the drugs, <laughs> those dirty, dirty drugs have worn <laughs> off and, uh, he looks, he looks ready to move. In fact, he looks in pretty good spirits. Um, so he's in riding shape. Oh yeah. He sidles okay. right up Excellent. next to you, Ymir, and, uh, kind of presents his head for a big scratch and is glad to be back with the group. Um, yeah. lets out a low rumble. Um, and you guys, uh, you mirror scratches him behind the ear, looks, uh, the big bear directly in his eyes, even with all the damage, he's still very proud of him for the, uh, endeavor he went through to survive against such a being. He looks down at Wotek and goes, a worthy war wound brother, you fought well. Okay. At this, he, he kind of nods and grunts at your intent. And, uh, you see him get kind of a gleam in his eye where he is definitely proud. You can tell all of you can tell as he slowly kind of arcs his gaze between all of you, you can tell that his measure of himself is, is a very impressed one because out of all the individuals before him, he alone stood against the Patriot and lived to tell the tale. A very uh, uh. impressive feat indeed. 
Um, I mean, he's only like half god, but he's I... <laughs> yeah, cocky <laughs> asshole. I got his arm. What do you got? <laughs> Busted up face, bitch. No, I'm I mean, you know. God damn, bro. <laughs> all right, so uh, you guys all uh, collect yourselves into the vehicles. You get uh, you, Ymir, you mount up on Wotech, and you guys head on over. And very quickly, I'm going to take a pause in a second here. You guys very quickly head on over to the transportation depot and begin heading inside uh, to get ready to rendezvous with Pilgrim and Harmony. Um, okay, and at that, that's our that's our four-hour mark is... Or should we go ahead and wrap it up now, or are we? I'm straight. Yeah, I'm good for a little while. I'm still I can, good. I, I can I can go at least another hour. I can I can go six at least. I might, might be able yeah. to go a little bit longer, but I can go another hour. Okay, yeah, six. Would yeah, be I'm good. Yeah, sounds good. I got an hour too. That absolutely Perfect. works. All right, guys. So you arrive at the transportation depot. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up. And as you do so, um, you guys hear a whistle from inside as you're all congregating uh, towards the front door. Um, as you Wotech look... is parked outside, or uh, yeah, yeah, he's okay. he's staying right near the entrance. So and Excellent. the whole okay. the whole town seems to have heard of you guys now, and is kind of you know people are nodding. You're noticing lots of attention, but people are giving you space because they understand you're up to important shit. This well concession foot giant. Right? This concession <laughs> from the populace definitely makes you guys understand that you're starting to move up uh in recognition. <laughs> so um okay, so as you hear the whistle from inside, um you guys see that uh the owner of the transportation depot that this you fucking guy again <laughs> that you had encountered <laughs> before, uh that's selling the weapons. Um he yells at you from inside of his little security cubicle. Uh, and he says, uh, are you looking for the silver knight? Yes, we are. Okay. He nods and he just corks a thumb to his left, basically signaling that you guys need to go around to the back of the building uh around to where the vehicle bay probably is um as you guys turn you realize this may be your last chance in town here unless you head back uh to pick up any of his wares um you remember he had some firearms some different kinds of mines and uh some blades uh in stock in stock currently I'll look um, at the comma after he responds to him and be like, I'm sorry. I just, I, I freeze up every time he says something. It's just, I, I, that's my bad. I should have helped. Uh, and I whispered I, to Ren, don't look at his face. <laughs> it just looks like a sweaty poop. All right. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So like he's kissing his teeth. Yeah. Man. Shit on his lips. Got some shit on his lip. Those teeth are running away from that mouth. Uh, yeah, they're trying to escape his ugly ass face. Uh, all right. So does anybody want to take uh, another look at his wares or are you guys ready to go? I'm Gucci. Okay. From what I remember seeing the prices, I, I think I'm good. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, I think I'm his good. wares rotated at all. Does he have anything new in stock compared to the day before? You I'm would, just asking. You would guess probably not. This doesn't look okay. like the kind of place where it changes that rotation. Often. In, I, I mean, okay. we did just come on a ship yesterday, so there could have been stuff that came in. Right. Uh, that's why I asked. I didn't know. So you, I. No. You would say from the very limited selection of what he does have, he probably doesn't have like an arms agreement with yeah. uh, with. Uh, reflex point um so and that's why he has such a limited kind of stock it's all shit that looks like it's been there for a while so he's also giving yamir gouger vibes like anything that his <laughs> prices have um he is not really even going for market retail he's always going to throw his extra percentage on top oh yeah you guys notice there's not you haven't seen anywhere else to buy weapons in this area so you know <laughs> 
Um, all right, so you guys head around the side, <clears throat> and as you get to the vehicle depot, uh, you pass by the first section that has several vehicles that are being maintenance by what looks like a robot uh, vehicle yard. This is definitely an impressive piece of uh, technology. Usually um, just finding humanoids uh, or DBs, aliens, that are able to work on advanced technology uh, is an impressive feat in and of itself. But here we've got an actual established infrastructure where it can be done um, at cost and uh, at a very high pace. Um, so this could be the groundwork for some really interesting advancements in the local area uh, in the days to come as well. Um, you do notice, uh, Ren, that you could conceivably go ahead and upgrade your vehicle here if you chose to. I mean, it's possible that these things would be able to add extra armor, maybe add a weapon system or two. Um, there's there's a lot of possibilities with, with a facility this advanced. Um, so it definitely piques your interest. Um, you do notice that as you guys are moving past this section, there's several very large vehicles uh, that are all being worked on, maintenance, and then several uh, smaller groups of vehicles um, in the size of dune buggies, um, things like uh, construction vehicles, um, four-wheelers, things like that. Now, the larger vehicles, as you get back to the, to the further reaches of the yard, um, the larger vehicles are where you find Harmony and Pilgrim, both loaded out for what looks like travel rather than battle. Um, both are wearing uh, basically full body um, kind of jumpsuits that have some augmentation with light armor padding uh, in the elbows, mostly the, you know, the joints, and then some uh, really light padding across the front of the chest and groin and across the back, a little bit on the shoulders. But for the most part, just, just essentially um, bright green colored uh, you know, travel jumpsuits that have lots of pockets and uh, attachment points. Um, each of them has a uh, kind of medium-sized, high-tech uh, travel pack, uh, backpack uh, set up, and um, each seems to be wearing uh, a, uh, a combat harness that has a radio and uh, what appears to be uh, several clips for, uh, energy clips for energy weapons. Um, they also each seem to have a vibro knife in that kind of, uh, thin kind of combat webbing harness that goes around their chest. Um, other than that, they're, they're, they just look like they're pretty much any kind of normal travelers on Rift's Earth, making sure that they're not going to get caught in some acid rain, or if they do have some, you know, rough environmental, things to deal with, they should be fairly well protected. Um, you do notice that Harmony also has her staff with her, her spear, um, but it doesn't appear like she has her armor. Um, all right. Uh, with this, you notice, uh, you notice Harmony has a small, um, you just describe it as like a parcel, uh, that seems to be attached with a, a very sturdy rigging of mega damage, uh, really light cable. Uh, Am I to... noticing any like trash cans or like waste around these parts or like just. Like... Absolutely. Absolutely. There, this area seems to be fairly well kept and, and pretty clean because of its importance, but around the town itself. Yeah. Most of it is pretty dilapidated and run down. Um, I mean, I'm looking for like 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 machine scraps and bits and stuff. Spare maybe spare wires, clips of wires that have been like cut off of a coil or, or off of a excess. Um, maybe springs, uh, mechanical pieces that are just like maybe slightly bent and thrown and discarded that I could maybe grab and repair myself just to just for small little like 
He just um, wants little knickknacks that he can take. It's more like for like replacement parts. Like I'm, I'm kind of like a um instead of like a person like a hoarder. I like I like having like all these small like Here's little salvage. things. I get yeah. you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You actually, as you're. I looking... also don't want to go above and beyond and like just steal their shit. But if it's like sure. shit that's being thrown away, I would be like, hey, can I grab? You know. Yeah. As you look around the area that you guys are walking into now, there's actually a bin. Uh, as you're walking. Uh, to meet up with Harmony by the the large vehicle. And uh, one of these bins, you can tell, is obviously just discarded stuff. For the most part, it's, I mean, any kind of wiring is just a couple inches long. There's, you know, some broken, uh, you know, small connectors and, you know, a few things that still would be serviceable. Um, you easily could get away with sifting through this for, a while if you wanted to and looking for parts that you might be able to repurpose for things. Um, or if you wanted, you could, you don't think anybody would even notice if you just opened a small, I think you have a few small sacks. You can mm -hmm. open a sack and just kind of like fill it really quick and sort through it later if you wanted. Yeah, I'd do that as long as I, I mean, I don't want to turn any heads and cause any commotion or no, or as you, any... you see it up ahead as you're walking by and you're already thinking about it. So you just kind of already have your sack out. And as you start grabbing some shit, there's workers walking all over the place. Nobody gives a shit. You can tell that it's just a, like basically a little, a little dumpster. So, okay. Um, I'll, I'll be doing that then. Okay. You can go ahead and, uh, you can go ahead and note that you got a sack of electronic scrap. Okay. Um, and... and a technical term, crap. <laughs> well, with his background, though, you have a pretty good chance as you're grabbing shit, you're you're trying to filter the things that are obviously useful in. Um, and with your background of salvage and with being kind of a technical genius, you, I mean, you're probably not gonna you're you're gonna do better than just some Joe Blow grabbing random shit. I'll put it that yeah, way. Yeah, it's not just a straight scoop of the hand. There's some there's some sifting around and Yeah. Yeah. Manipulating of what I'm taking and whatnot. Um, let's see. Okay, so you guys uh join up with Harmony and Pilgrim and um right away they nod at you and they ask if everybody's ready to go. Um you see that the rear section of the vehicle has a large loading hatch that's been dropped and the interior um, up by the cab that you can see from the rear as the hatch is down. You guys can see all the way up to the uh, a kind of like crew compartment that's in the forward midsection right behind the cabin. Um, and that crew compartment has room for, you would guess, probably 30 people at least. Um, there are seats above and below on each side, each one with a really strong um, kind of combat rig that will come down and lock into place, uh, a la dropship kind of technology. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the rear, you see that there is indeed an upper and lower level with ramps that would allow uh, light vehicles uh, the size of yours, Ren, to be loaded up comfortably. Well, um, this picture here, this would be about the size of my vehicle. My, my, mine wouldn't be this tall, but my vehicle is about the size, length, and width of the vehicle in the picture, correct? Well, you're, yeah, this vehicle, we're going to say, it's not is represent, quite yeah. a bit larger yeah. than the way it looks here. Yeah, but then yes, it's actually depicted. Yes, but I'm just absolutely. saying for them, to, for uh, Dex and uh, Barrett to understand, like my, my vehicle would be about the size of this one in the picture compared to those guys. Not probably as tall, but like otherwise proportionate that. So, and you're saying mine can, one of mine or maybe two could even fit into this one that we're getting inside of? Correct, above and below. And that's if assuming yours is like half the height that it is right now, the, the, yeah. of this of this image. And probably shorter as well because yours is about the size of like a large sand rail with like armor and attachments and stuff on it. Is that is that correct? Like a uh, four-seater? Uh, mine's a four-seater, but it's got a... But it's also, like, it's a healthy four-seater with a large bed in the back. So, like, the middle seats are going to be sitting not like your typical car. Like, the middle seats are going to be in the between the front and back wheels. I get you. I get you. And then you. the 
the and the, the back wheel and past it are gonna be is gonna be the bed where I've got the the uh the arm with the, the with the laser uh like bit thing the uh stationary uh that's stationary but the the um uh, the mechanical armed uh or not armed I guess seated turret and then also uh a workstation in the very back that you can be opened up I got once apart and stuff like that. Okay. And I've got so, your, close to that I've got one, the I I've got the stats for it here and I'm sure twelve feet tall. Okay. Is it twelve feet tall? That's not right. Twelve foot long. Mm, Twelve feet long is way too short. Twelve feet tall sounds better than the length would be way harder. Okay, so it looks like it says twelve feet tall and sixteen feet long, four point five. So this is a pretty beefy vehicle, but regardless, at least now we have the dimensions right. Um, Regardless. This thing is like much larger than a bus. Obviously, it would be more like a like a car carrier size vehicle. Does that make sense? And like a semi with a like a car trailer on the on the back. Only the whole thing's enclosed. And again, the middle section is relatively the forward middle section is pretty much just one large. Is it big gun. enough to accommodate Wotech? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, okay. You can comfortably. Yes, you can. Okay. You can duck in yourself, and he's got plenty of area, uh, okay. in the front of where the vehicles would go. So, but nice. essentially, you guys get the feeling that this thing, just the general build of it, it could take on any kind of terrain. You can actually tell that it's got, um, kind of like some buses do. It's got a hinged section in the middle that's able to actually angle the vehicle instead of keeping the body straight. Um, so whatever kind of challenges this thing, mud, rock, whatever, it could even climb pretty well too with, with the design of this thing. So it's a pretty impressive piece of technology. You also notice that the defensive armaments on it on the top um, look pretty, pretty intense. They probably could scare off most large predators. Um, and it also looks like there's probably some... Uh, pretty interesting little uh, 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 point-blank defenses on it as well. You guys are seeing some smoke dispensers as well as what looks like it could be electrified plating uh, hookups. So um, it's also extremely heavily armored. And the crew that's servicing it currently, much like uh, a contemporary flight deck crew uh, refueling and doing minor repairs, um, they seem extremely professional, and everybody is very efficient with every motion. So you can tell this is; these are people that have done this a lot. Um, you see that there are already a crew manning the cockpit. Um, it looks like they are all ready to go and doing uh, pre-trip checklists as usu- as usual, and there are about 10 different individuals already loaded up into the passenger section. Um, Harmony nods at you guys and uh, very quickly just says, I've already paid our fare. Um, If you'd care to take your vehicle, you're more than welcome. Um, But I've, I've prepaid the sum it would cost for you to be transported, you know, within, within this vehicle. Um, and she says the choice is yours. Uh, with this, she turns and starts walking towards, uh, getting into the crew compartment. Um, everybody want to load up or. Yep. Here it calls wanna... to Wotech raises his giant voice up and goes, Wotech, flock na, which is Wotech shield wall which is a battle cry and or a cry to come to his side because uh seeing everything transpire okay uh he marches up close to the rear of the vehicle and then promptly sits down okay. and just looks at you 
Ymir, Ymir looks over at Ren, deciding or waiting to see what he's going to do, whether he's going to take the vehicle or we're all going to load up onto this, the big armored transport. He kind of looks at Ren and quizzically, like, are we going here or? I mean, if we're traveling with them, I'm not leaving my vehicle, so, but we could bring it aboard their vehicle if, uh, uh... I mean, you guys are welcome to ride, you know, obviously you guys, I'm sure you picked this up, but you guys could either go under your own power or you could get in the vehicle. You could, whatever you want to do. Right. And there's enough space for them to load up your vehicle in the back, I thought. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I would, I, then I would basically just be like, um, you know. Um, I would tell them I I I I wouldn't leave my vehicle. I I, I built this from scrap, but I mean, if if you would allow us to bring it on board with you, uh, I'd be that'd be appreciative. That'd be appreciated. Yeah, the the crew nods and says, "Yeah, they it's all paid for. No worries." And um, so you step out, and they say the only you know <clears throat> the only um caveat is that we have to load it up, obviously. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, before we leave, though, I do. I did want to go and look at like uh, stuff they have here for vehicles before we leave. Okay. Um, you start heading into the depot, and uh, you hear something come over the loudspeaker saying, um, 10 minutes till uh, cab A departure. Ten minutes." And uh, with that, lots of the crew start kind of working feverishly to kind of finish up their tasks. Um, you start walking into the depot, uh, a worker. Meanwhile, while Ren's your... doing this, Ymir nudges Wotek, like, come on, boy, let's load up. And they both board and get situated on the land cruiser. Uh, so you nudge him and, uh, he just kind of grunts and looks up at you. Okay, so Ren... You're heading into the depot. A worker jumps into your vehicle as you're walking in, and you hear it rev up as he pulls it into one of the slots. Uh, they load it on the top rack uh, space, and um, you right away hear the engine cut, and you would assume everything's all set as you walk in the doors. A comma, you're doing what? I just jump in. Okay. You jump in, head right up, and find a seat. Uh, you actually find a seat right next to Pilgrim, who's sitting next to Harmony, who's got somebody else, one of the, you know, just locals on her other side. And uh, you plop down and pull your harness down, and boom, you're locked and loaded. Uh, okay, Ymir, what are you doing? Ymir takes out uh, a little pinch of the uh, bear food out of his pouch and hands it to Wotek and sort of leans down and whispers in his ear and goes, safety aboard, rest now, there will be much fight ahead. Okay. Um... Okay, he looks at you and just kind of stares at you for a moment, and you're getting a sense that he's waiting. He He's being purposely willful and waiting for something. Then Ymir looks at him with kind of an inquisitive look because he's noticing the energy uh, trying to get a read from him, like, why, why the hesitation? Okay, and at this, you see that uh, he leans his head over to the pouch that you're keeping the mushroom in, and he kind of sniffs at it and then starts nudging it with his nose. Say that one more time, Odin. You you notice that he he kind of sticks his nose up against the pouch that you've got the mushroom in, he kind of starts flicking the pouch with his nose and snorting a little uh, bit. Oh, uh, well, 
noticing noticing this and noticing that his brother might still uh, be somewhat battle weary or battle worn, or maybe he just wants to feel the effects of the mushroom while he's in another moving cage. Uh, Ymir takes the fourth of the mushroom he has left in his pouch and lets uh, Wotek on the good half of his face with the prehensile part still uh, take whatever his fill is of the mushroom before uh, but before he uh, gives it to him he kind of makes a gesture like you're getting on this fucking thing before you crash out because he's not going to have him pass out and try to push him <laughs> up this fucking ramp <laughs> man <laughs> it's great all right, so you coax him with a piece of the mushroom. Yeah, up the maybe, ramp. Maybe it's like, maybe it's like you know, uh, you almost had it. Right, should have been quicker than that. You almost had it. Okay, like, he it... gets almost to the top of the ramp, and he gets real sick of the fucking game, and jumps <laughs> forward and snatches it out of your fingers and chomps it, and kind of indignantly just kind of waddles his way up into the front section where he needs to fucking plop down <laughs> as he gets there he just kind of looks back over his shoulder at you and he just kind of does a real simple kind of nod and obviously he's he appreciates it and then he kind of curls up in the corner the best he can and just kind of flops over and and uh he looks like he's just real calm the mushroom takes hold instantly and um gets kind of glassy-eyed gets gets real mellow man real mellow and uh wotek is good uh good. then Yabir finds his place situated comfortably but he's still the top of his massive mall is uh facing downward towards the floor of the ship with the pommel and the handle facing up. He's got one hand on it as he's sitting down in a seat comfortably. Okay. All right. You are all set to go. Yep. Um, Ren, as you get into the depot, long story short, you talk to um, one of the representatives and they really quick take you through um, a kind of little hollow display presentation of some of the top features they offer as upgrades to most land vehicles. Um, and most of it is predicated on upgrading suspension, upgrading armor protection, um, installing simple weapon systems, meaning not automated systems, but maybe fixed forward, um, you know, uh, uh, simple rail guns, simple lasers, nothing of real military grade, but definitely is still effective. Um, and they also seem to have quite a bit in uh, terms of being able to uh, modify cosmetically uh, ground vehicles. Um, so they show lots of examples of people having, you know, giant horns mounted on the, you know, top or sides of vehicles, um, things like a dragging, uh, kind of chain tail looking, uh, monstrosity with bull horns and, you know, things like that. But for the most part, uh, that's about where it ends. You're not seeing a lot of engine modification and you're not seeing a lot of like high tech, um, almost like hover conversions or flight conversions or any kind of really significant technology offered. Um, I'll ask if they have a, um, a, like a, a bargain bin, like a broken or needed to, to be repair parts that they might sell on the cheap. Um, or seeing some scrap from stuff that they've repaired for other or upgraded for people, and that they're gonna the, maybe refurbish themselves or stuff like that. The representative looks a little puzzled, almost like this is a question that. And I'll just give him a shrug, being like, "I like to tinker. I'm sorry. I know that's a weird request. I'm you, just you're picking up the the vibe that this is something that people that usually don't spend a lot of money would say." in an establishment like this because her energy right away turns to kind of apprehensive 
And she goes, I, I could inquire with my manager if you'd like, but it will take uh, some time for him to get back to you. Um, I'm getting ready to take off. I'm I'm sorry for the bizarre question. It's just it's 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 a weird thing of mine. I uh, it, it's it's not to insult your guys' work or insult what you do here. It's just I, I when I have free time, I like to I, I like to restore myself. I like to fix up things, and um, sometimes when those are available, I can find some diamonds in the rough. Sometimes you could say of just uh, bizarre pieces that I. I have I can have a lot of fun fixing up myself as opposed to just strapping something brand new on my my vehicle. So um, okay, no and with, worries. with this, she lo actually looks a little surprised, a little surprised, and she kind of looks you over really quick, and she goes, "Are you an inventor?" Um, perhaps. Uh, I've never called myself that, but I guess it's kind of what I do. Okay, well, as you're looking at her, you notice that she actually seems relatively uh, unmutated or uh, devolved. And for the most part, although she's, you know, relatively, uh, shall we say, post-apocalyptic wanderer kind of looking, I mean, definitely lots of smudges and, you know, unkept hair for the most part, and obviously has led a pretty rough life. Teeth aren't exactly pearly white, but... For the most part, I mean, wearing clean enough clothes and, and you know, keeping herself fairly maintained um, the best she can, considering. Um, she kind of gives you this really kind of broad smile. And you see for the first time that this, this individual actually has kind of the glint of intellect in her eyes. And as uh, she gives you this big smile, she really quickly looks side to side. I'm kind of scanning your immediate surroundings and make sure nobody is kind of eavesdropping or watching. And uh, she leans close over the counter to you and she says, um, I know you have to leave. Uh, she says, but I'm an inventor too. Um, she says, I can see that uh, you know what you're doing with tech. Um, she says, I'll talk to my manager and see what I can work out. She says, check back in with me soon. I'm sure I'll have something for you. And uh, with this, she reaches out her hand and Offers it to shake. I will shake her hand. Okay. Uh, hopefully not surprising her with the lack of real um, arm attached. Uh, as you reach out to shake her hand, she definitely notices your your uh, your arms. And as they move and uh, interact with her hand, her eyes get really, really wide. You don't know how much she's picking up on, but she looks very surprised when she takes a close look at your arm. Um, and at this, her her smile widens even more, and uh, she hurriedly gets back to her tasks and calls the next person in line. Um... Okay. Um, so you hear another announcement say uh, Cab A leaving in one minute. And you very quickly head back out just as they're getting ready to close up the rear of the transport. Um, you dip inside uh, right as they turn off the ignition to the last of the four quads that have been loaded on the lower deck uh, and let's see you notice that each one of these quads is really really massive um, they're the kind uh, that have almost uh, I guess you'd call it more like side by sides um, so they're they're pretty pretty beefy vehicles each one has a pretty good amount of MDC plating on it and they're obviously meant for pretty rugged terrain. Um, fairly advanced tech, um, probably kind of modern age from our perspective, uh, maybe a little bit futuristic. Um, anyway, the point is they each look like they could fetch a pretty impressive price, um, and you would guess that these are actually being moved somewhere to, to get sold. So you guys all kind of mark this as holy shit, this place, like, makes vehicles and sends them places to sell them. Like, you 
you really would not have guessed that it's that connected to the local uh, economy. Um, and yet here it is. Um, okay, so you guys are all mounted up. Everybody gets into their seats, locks in. And as you hear the engines rumble to life, um, you would guess that this is actually some kind of like old diesel variant of vehicle, um, which is still pretty prolific in a lot of areas. Um, okay, the slight vi vibration as it starts up uh, kind of belies its power, and very quickly over the intercom, uh, the captain comes across and says, uh, welcome to Cab A's uh, direct route uh, morning journey to uh, uh, to the steps, he says. Um, he says, we don't put up with any kind of ruckus from passengers, so if you want to make it to your destination in one piece and not find yourself out on your ass, uh, he says, stay quiet, uh, enjoy the ride, and don't cause any problems. Um, he says, uh, when, when we arrive, um, we'll be doing a turnaround trip, uh, after eight hours. Um, he says, so if you're wanting to head back down, uh, to Sinner's Cove, uh, he says, you've got that long to get back to us. Um, he says, keep in mind that the steps, they're going to take you quite a while, uh, unless you're one of these uh, unnaturals. And you hear at this, uh, his co-pilot let out what sounds like a, a coyote's wail of a laugh. Really, really unsettling um, in the background. Uh, the pilot himself kind of chuckles a couple of times, too, in a way that kind of just makes all of your skins crawl. It doesn't, for some reason, he sounds a little malicious when he chuckles. Um he says, uh, anyways, sit back, find something to occupy yourselves, uh, and we should be there in about two hours. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. So you guys pull out of the depot and... Let's see, you start heading through the town itself on the kind of outskirts. Once again, you notice that uh, the town itself is just basically desolate ruins uh, the further out you go. Um, reminders of how completely forgotten and corrupted the concepts of the old world have become in this new dark age. Um, let's see... You get to the edge of town, and very quickly, uh, you guys make it out into a more open, sprawling, kind of rocky terrain. Um, most of the land is hard pack or solid rock, um, and a lot of it looks like there's been massive erosion of the area lately, uh, that... It could have started 100 years ago, or it could have started 50 years ago. Either way, most of the topsoil has been washed away, and everything has a weird patina of rust, it looks like, across it. Um, this is strange, because that usually only occurs, obviously, in metallic substances. But there's some kind of reddish, uh, powdery kind of scum that seems to have accumulated across the landscape. Um, as you guys look out in the distance, you're able to see the large kind of mountainous plateau uh, that uh, the keep is supposedly, or I'm sorry, the temple is supposedly set upon, um, but you see no temple itself as it's uh, far too uh, long of a distance away. Um, and you would guess that the temple would have to be incredibly tall for you to see it over the lip of the uh, the plateau that it sits on. Now, um, let's see. So, uh, essentially, I'm trying to say that it's like a huge mesa. Um, you guys start heading down what appears to be a pretty consistent 
fairly well-maintained dirt road. Just one second here. Is it? Okay, we need to be over on. Is it this one? Okay. Uh, let's see. 